Hello and welcome to today's talk, Monday the 23rd of January. Now I'm kind of curious really, just how long can the UK government and other governments and mainstream media keep on ignoring the huge amount of excess deaths that is around? It's just quite incredible. To say an elephant is in the room, it would be represent significant understatement. And this is all around the world, or at least all around the sophisticated Western countries. Uh, this is happening everywhere. And now I'm going to be looking at data today from Europe. This is from Euro Mono Bulletin. And as we'll see, this is official European data. I'm going to show you this site in a minute. This week, uh, pooled Euro Mono all cause mortality, elevated levels of excess mortality. Overall, all around the place geographically and in all age groups. And we'll be looking at age groups such as 0 to 14. Now, um, the chief medical officer in the UK has said that the excess deaths are uh, caused by people not being able to get their statins during the pandemic. Well, most 14-year-olds don't take statins, so I think we need to do a bit better than that, to be quite honest. And why mainstream media is not absolutely doing a, in the UK would say, doing a, doing a Jeremy Paxman on him. Why, why aren't the media getting at him and asking him these questions? Where, where, is the main, where is the investigative journalism here? You know, is it just left to a few eccentrics on YouTube? It's, it's really quite bemusing. Anyway, data from 25 European countries substan uh, or substantial regions. Uh, average levels from pre-2020. Now, the thing about the data I'm about to show you is they take their averages from pre-2020, so we're not dealing with the increased levels in the pandemic. And here's the first graphic. This is in all ages. Now, these peaks in death here, of course, we expect this because these were during the, uh, the pandemic months. Um, but then we see that there's another one here and another one very high at the moment. Uh, this we wouldn't expect. So here's a bit of a blow up of that. So this is week, uh, this is the middle of uh, 2022, week 26. Well, what we've got here is this is what we would expect, the, uh, the line here. This is the range we would expect. The red line indicates uh, a significant statistically significant increase and anything blue is above that. So we can see that the excess deaths have been consistently high throughout 2022. And yet we don't have an official explanation for this, other than people not being able to get their statins from the chief medical officer. I really think maybe it's time for uh, Chris Whitty to think about going back to some other sort of employment, because I don't see that the, the, the job is being done at the moment, to be quite honest. Um, so let's look at another age group here, 0 to 14 year olds. Now I'll show you this on the cumulative data here, but it is increased for 0 to 14 year olds as well. Um, and again, um, if we see the baseline there, it actually is above. This will be clear when I show you a cumulative graph. But if we look now, we see a significant uh, increase uh, in this age group. Uh, these are young people who it's, it's, no, it's not lack of treating ongoing diseases which is causing this. It's, I'm not saying that's not part of it in other age groups, but in this age group, I don't think it is. Uh, 15 to 44 year old age group again seeing the baseline here and consistently above the baseline consistently above the baseline and uh, sometimes above uh, the, the, uh, the significant level as well uh, 45 to 64 year olds again the high levels in the, in the pandemic waves you would expect 2020 2021 this was the alpha wave, for example, remember it uh, well, this would be the delta wave here. Um, but now it's still above what we would expect, uh, and substantially so. Um, 10,404 in this age group, excess deaths. Um, the dotted line there. So we see that all of 2022 have been, well, we've only dipped below what we would expect there on, on very rare occasions. Um this is a significant issue, 65 to 74s, again, fairly similar pattern. And again, we see all of 2022, or at least all the second half of 2022, this really quite a substantial increase, uh, 75 to 84 year olds. It's kind of uh, everywhere. Uh, and again, this is the older age group there before we go back to the all age ones that we started with. Now, I'm going to show you some more uh, data from um, this uh, from Europe in a minute. I'll just show you where this is from actually uh, briefly because um, 
we, we have to be careful with our sources. This is from here. Euromono is a European mortality monitoring activity. Official national mortality statistics are pro- provided uh, from 29 European countries of substantial regions. So it, it's supported by the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control, World Health Organization and the uh, State Serum Institute of Denmark. And you can see these for yourself. Just click on it and you, and you, you get all this you get all this information here. These are the graphs we've just looked at. I'll just show you some at the bottom here. The, these are, these are, I've still got this set to cumulative here. So again, all ages. Now, what we're looking at here is this is the baseline that we expect pre-2020. Uh, pre, uh, uh, now, this dark line here is 2021. Okay, there were still some pandemic deaths going on there. But 2022, in the times of Omicron, we know that deaths are massively reduced. So we cannot attribute these deaths to COVID. These deaths are caused... Or well, the majority of these deaths are caused by something other than COVID. Um, so that's that age group. That, that's all ages. Then the 0 to 14 is now what we actually see here. In 2021, when the pandemic was uh, was still raging, we actually see that less 0 to 14 year olds were dying. So in, in 2021, at least for the first half of 2021, deaths in 0 to 14 year olds were lower than expected. Great news. Then we actually see that it starts going up here. So um, this means it was actually, there was more deaths per week here than we would expect until at the end of 2021, uh, we've, uh, uh, we've got excess deaths there in week, week uh, 52, uh, 446. But it's, all of 22, it's been higher and it's just accumulated. So we've got, we've got what, what can we see there? We've got 1,371 excess deaths in 0 to 14 year olds. These are huge amounts of deaths. So why have deaths in 0 to 14 year olds in these European countries been higher than we would expect for all of 2022? And why isn't this all over everywhere? And why aren't you sense my frustration? Uh, 15 to 44, again, higher than baseline. 2021 2022 uh, again 45 to 64 again accumulating as we go through the year uh, 2021 uh, okay that was a pandemic year but 2022 there were still 30,000 excess deaths when we wouldn't have, we can't attribute these to covid the older age group, 65 to 74, again, much the same. 2021, we'd expect some more deaths there from the pandemic. 2022, we wouldn't be expecting the excess deaths, but we still see them. Same in 75 to 84s. Taking all of 65 pluses, we see more excess deaths in 2022 than in 2021. This is not the way round we would expect it. These are not COVID deaths. And we would expect the excess deaths in 2022 to be even lower because a lot of the more vulnerable people had died in 2020 and 2021. Over 85s showing much the same, <coughs> much the same trend. So <clears throat> do check that out for yourself. Fascinating site. You can fiddle with it and get all sorts of interesting uh, tidbits of data from it. Um, so it's, it's all over. Significant increase in excess deaths throughout 2022 uh, and um, the first half of uh, the first weeks of uh, 2023 also of course as we've just said from the European data it's all over and in all uh, age groups now something interesting from the UK we did look at this um, this was the Inst- institution faculty of actuaries from life insurance we looked at this a couple of days ago. Mortality rate in 2022 compared to 2019. Uh, we did notice, for example, the excess deaths in the uh, not to, in the 20s to 44 year olds was 7.8 percent higher than we would expect in 2022. This is again consistent with the European position, and is being ignored by our governments and mainstream media. Um, uh, I'm not going to get annoyed because it's just too absurd. It's 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 just too absurd. I'm just going to try and give you as cognitively as I can. Although although I I am um, my, my feelings about this are pretty strong as as you can probably tell. It's maybe sleep sleeping through a bit. 
In the UK, in the second half of 2022, uh, 26,000 excess deaths compared to 4,700 in the first half of 2022. So as 2022 went on, let's be clear about this, 2022 went on, the excess deaths increased. Uh, and the number of deaths registered in England, Wales, in week one of 2023 compared to 2019, 30% higher than we would expect. Now, um, I hope some of you managed to catch the excellent interview we did with Professor Norman Fenton yesterday on the deficits in the Office for National Statistics data. And bear in mind that the deaths, the excess deaths got higher as we went through 2022. So um, the Office for National Statistics data set deaths by vaccination status in England. Now, these uh, are downloadable as the uh, data in uh, spreadsheets. Um, they don't mean too much to me, um, but um, Professor Fenton and others can take them and analyse them and work out thousands of things from them. Um, that's that's what statisticians do, thankfully. Um, so is this bang up to date now as we would expect? Well, oh, the last time this was updated was the 31st of May. So with no comparative data between the vaccinated <clears throat> and the unvaccinated in England after the 31st of May at 2022. And yet we know that the mortality was significantly higher in the second half of 2022 compared to the first half of 2022. So I would have thought that this is a bit of an emergency ONS really, uh, because we need to look at all variables. We're not saying there's a connection, of course. Uh, we would like the data to speak for itself. There we see the excess deaths uh, throughout the European countries. Again, compared to the baseline here, as we stress, um, higher in all age groups and in all regions. And in fact, if you uh, go onto this site, it really is quite good. You can see, uh, you, can, you can play with it for hours. Uh, Germany, high excess. England, uh, moderate excess. Scotland, high excess. Uh, the, the countries for which the data is available. Greece, low excess. Spain, lower excess, Portugal, moderate excess. Um, yeah, I'm not overly convinced by that French data, but never mind. Uh, we, we see the data there uh, readily available, but we did look at the pooled data. So um, check that out for yourself. Make sure I'm not making it up. Um, excess deaths throughout 2022, uh, way above baseline, not what we would expect, not explicable by COVID met by deafening silence from governments and mainstream media. I'm just going to leave it at that. I think I've said enough. It's just um, utterly bizarre and inexplicable. But thank you for watching.